Um, so I made a, a documentary uh, called 808, which was a music documentary about the, the 808 drum machine, which changed a lot of things in music. And so for five years of my life, I was essentially drum machine obsessed. And uh, after that, it also made me feel that, that my documentary career, um, I needed to take a pause. Uh, so I decided uh, actually by my wife's advice to, to go into my first love, which are horror movies. And in that transition, I thought, well, I'm not done with drum machine. How about I kill somebody with a drum machine? And that's where I created uh, the short film conductor and, uh, and the character of Alexis. And so from there, uh, when we were touring and feeling the response that we were getting, um, I started to write and expand on her story and developing a character story, an artist's journey, um, rather than a serial killer. I would say that like the various movies that I thought of, um, American Psycho, Assassination Nation, and then throughout the movie, you're going to see little homages to Battle Royale, to Scanners, to even, even an Easter egg for Chopping Mall. So I have my whole horror culture that kind of, uh, you know, is touched upon in this whole film. But um, yeah, no, I really like the, the sort of the marrying of, um, of American Psycho and Assassination Nation um, and, and then adding a musical element that hadn't been done before um, to, to kind of create an artist's journey that was just a different kind of killer and, and also staying with her rather than being on the other side so that, so that we could really see her full world. A lot of credit needs to go to our amazing uh, casting director, um, Amy Renee. She, she, um, I was very aware of Jasmine, Jasmine Savoy Brown, who was in The Leftovers. And I love The Leftovers and I had, you know, as soon as Amy mentioned her, I immediately thought of the leftovers. And, um, but that suggestion was a genius uh, idea. And then I, I met Jasmine and we really hit it off. And I had felt that she had an understanding and a, and a, and a um, synergy with the character that was just incredible. Um, and then uh, Lily Simmons, I've been following for many years. She's been in many shows that I like from Banshee to Ray Donovan to, to the likes. I love Bone Tomahawk as well. And so I was always kind of hoping to work with her and, and, and it worked out. She liked the script and her chemistry with Jasmine was immediately great. Mm -hmm. um, and likewise, since watching the, the TV show Vinyl, I, I thought James was awesome. So I got very lucky. I got very lucky because I got actors who I knew and that I really liked. And, um, and they also really liked the script. So we got, we got the best um, you know, relationship from the start and, and then on set, it was just a pleasure to work with them. Because it was important to still anchor um, uh, a timing. And this is, where, this is where I do believe that the cop, um, uh, Detective Fuentes is a, is a, is a pace setter for the urgency um, that one feels. And, and it is important to, to have a sense of the ramification of all those murders, not just they happen, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but the, the peculiarity of those murders also, I liked the fact that the cops really didn't know what was going on. Mm -hmm. and, and because it kind of helped highlight that what she was doing was really unlike most killers. We spoke a lot. We spoke a lot. We, we really broke it down between us. I had a wonderful time um, also adjusting the dialogues with, uh, with them to make sure that they sounded like them. Um, and as far as, and most of them had musical backgrounds. So, they, so it was great to put them in situation that, that they knew. Jasmine is a singer songwriter. And so she has a natural groove that really showed uh, in the movie. And, 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 uh, and when I was there with them to kind of condition them, I, to put them in the mood, they, we, we, we had, from the start, we had a great relationship and I knew how to switch them on. And, um, and, and, and again, that's also because Jasmine cares so much about this character that she would never let me um, not be an, on top of my game. She, want, she would push me, so I get to push her. And that meant that when we were, um, when I was shouting action, 
boom, we were in there. And it was really, uh, it's again, it's a testament to the quality of those actors. Um, Lily and James also had a real full grasp of the of the, the situations. So so we really, it's almost like we didn't need to warm up too much. We, we, we knew where we were. And then it's a fast shoot. It was only 20 days. So oh. that allowed us to, to never lose momentum. Actually, I, I, you know, I've, I've heard this and it's interesting because I do think that, that her father is only present um, throughout the film. You know, she obviously sees him a lot in her work um, mm -hmm. and she recreates the, the sensation. Um, somebody wrote that, what if you experienced heaven? What would you do to feel that again? And I wanted to focus on that. I wanted to focus on her journey because as a child, she ignores this traumatic event because of the high of regaining her, her hearing that she had lost um, in an accident. So she regains it. She experienced synesthesia. She sees all those colors and she's in a, in, a, in, a, in a heavenly high instead of connecting with death. So her whole life, she's disconnected to death. And she is all about that immersive experiences. And that's what she's after. Now, it's not because she's disconnected. Quite the opposite. It's because she still lives that night on and on and on. So actually, and we consulted um, a lot to make sure that we got that right, mm -hmm. is trying to, we couldn't just bring her family or her, her dead mother all the time, because I would just, the same way as she doesn't look at her victims ever. She doesn't connect with death, she connects with music. And so the trauma is so, the, the, the best uh, depiction of the trauma is how much she wants to achieve it, uh, to achieve um, that sensation again, because that's all she has left. And so, but she also, she makes a point of working out of her family's RV. She, um, you know, she unpacks at one point speakers that she says are from the, the living room uh, she grew up in. She lives in the past a lot. And, uh, but, but her focus is on, is on, on the, the cocoon, the musical cocoon that she felt that night. So we had a, a, an amazing team for the sound because, you know, it's a very experimental and ambitious um, uh, challenge to create music with flesh um, and also to shift the paradigm that music instruments are weapons and the flesh is music. So, um, you know, and because we shot the short film conductor already, we had um, we had started with the experiment and we had achieved quite a bit with it. So that gave us a bit of a framework to work from. And Jakko Maninen, our lead composer, worked on both. Uh, similarly, Yussi Tegelman, who mixes, our senior mixer, just um, um, also did both the short and the, and, the, and the feature. And he works with Sam Raimi, so he, he knows horror very well, and he's a musician, so he knows music very well. So that was amazing to continue working with them. And on top of that, to um, add um, Alexander Burke, who is an instrumentalist and no, understood the instruments that I was cho choosing for those scenes and Omar el Deeb, who is a fantastic score uh, composer, so that we could really create this complex use of music where music is integral to the, to the story. And it kind of goes in and out of score to a music that also the characters experience at the same time as the audience. So we have this duality that was really a challenge. And I am not a musician, so I relied wholeheartedly on the, the uh, talent of this amazing team and I'm, I'm you know I, when I come up with a crazy idea like that to have them look at me like I am indeed crazy but that they're <laughs> willing to do it was you know I it's it's humbling and it's really I am eternally grateful to um to their um to their stubbornness to get this right because our, our sound is very unique and I'm extremely proud of it Well, you know, I've been a producer for 17 years, so it's, it's uh, you know, I've been shooting all sorts of things as a producer, some I've written and, and such, but, um, but there also is a testament to my producing partner, Han Noaukia, who, um, who has great crews and great uh, people here in Los Angeles. And when we kind of 
started to recruit again from the short onwards, it allowed us to really um, to really push um, the, uh, the the envelope. And then you know through our uh, various contacts, we managed to to we were looking for a cinematographer, and we got introduced to Daphne. And Daphne is an extremely uh, precise and talented cinematographer who really knew how to how to manage uh, colorful light in situation. And that was essential for me um, and in this story. So I, that was a moment where we met that was really like exactly the cherry on top where we could really make the most out of. And, and similarly, we got to meet um, our amazing line producer, uh, Dave Zhao, who really made um, my life as a director, fantastic. My, my first ADs, I had two of them uh, in two different parts of the shoot, uh, Eve K and Buzz also. And it's, I got lucky, but I guess this is where I'm lucky that the story talked to so many people and people wanted to be part of it. And, um, and we, got, we could all work around and become a, a living organism working to deliver the story. It was a lengthy process and probably made longer because of uh, COVID. Um, you know, we had moments where we heard uh, collaborators, although we were working remotely, uh, we, we had collaborator, collaborators who ended up having COVID. We ended up having all sorts of systems uh, working. So that took, that added more time, but also there was a lot of work on the sound, um, a lot of work. Um, we had a, we had a day of pickups actually of, of, um, of pickup to do, uh, it was in February and just before the world shut down. And it was in February, 2020, just before the world shut down. Cause we shot the movie in November, uh, 2019. And then we had a day of pickup in, in February. And then it was um, trying to, to, to juggle this crazy world uh, shutdown and the post-production and see when we could be ready. So that's a condition called synesthesia. And synesthesia is, a, is the ability to experience uh, sounds or certain sounds um, with another sound, uh, another sense, sorry. Um, so for example, some people hear numbers, um, they will see colors, you mm -hmm. know, and, and there are also, but there are many forms of synesthesia. And I was really uh, studying the matter and I discovered artists like, uh, there's the painter, Melissa McCracken, there's a few musicians who have synesthesia. And the way to describe it is, always sounds different but the idea is that it's a it's a visual manifestation so first i wanted to create something uh maybe a bit nordic like me uh which is uh you wanted to use northern lights kind of manifesting but then i felt that it needed to be a little bit more psychedelic so then i created um and with hanu we we experimented a lot to create this range of colors manifesting all around her but in the cinematography as well daphne had to create a light that existed on the situation so that when when it when we immerse Alexis, it has to start from behind her all the way to the front of the screen. So on set, we had we experimented with lights, we experimented with tubes of color that I was literally dancing in front of Jasmine with the tubes of color to get to create the the the, the light effect on her. And then after that in post-production, we created those manifestation that would break and and then intensify uh, the color choices to to paste the story so you'll see you know this heightened of reds and stuff coming through and so yeah it was a uh, another side of the experimentation So South by Southwest is one of my favorite festivals in the world. Um, I, I had 808 premiere there in 2015. So I got to know what, it, what it's like when it's happening in person. Um, the, the response was amazing, actually. We, um, we uh, you know, we're not going to convince everybody. Some people obviously got mad at it. But overall, the majority were positive. And, and one of the things was just really welcoming the experimentation and the artistry um understanding a different kind of horror a different identity trying to promote our inclusivity our diversity um and and try to understand everything we attempted to do um and so south by was the perfect uh, festival for that now 
of course, having it uh, virtually was hard because I love the festival, as I said, and I missed having the audience's reaction. Um, it, but but um, we also had already dis uh, sold the movie to, di to be distributed by Gravitas here in the US. Um, and also, you know, we also had for the UK um, by Dazzler. So the movie was already kind of in motion as far as going towards release. So it was perfect. We, we've been very lucky. Um, this is what happens when you put something very weird and experimental. It's not for everybody, but when it, when it hits, people really connect. And that's, uh, you know, the one thing that I wish that, that, that uh, would have made me very sad is, is if people thought my movie was for, forgettable. And it doesn't matter if they like it or not, nobody has ever forgotten this film. And I think this is why the partners that have jumped on board now to help us bring it to the audience, they know that. They know that this is a movie that connects with people um, and generates reactions. So we are very, very lucky. We're really humbled by the response and, uh, and we can't wait to, to, to release it everywhere.